Okay, the lovely ukulele sounds mean that it's another podcast episode. So welcome to the Mont Travel podcast, episode 17. They are flying by. Wow. Good evening to a very, a very warm evening. And just got to say, uh, great news that Wales have just beaten Turkey 2-0 in a very, very enthralling game of football. So well done, Wales. And we're all getting now for... Uh, that was fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, yeah I can't, I, all those, whatever they were, 300 Welsh fans, I don't know how they're going to get on. They self-isolate well, they get back. It's we'll a rough night for them. <laughs> so well, it's, it's, did, it's you, the did you see how far away they were from the actual pitch? It's <laughs> wonder if they see anything uh, anyway. Bonkers, it? <laughs> oh, fresh hubris. Right, well, it's the 16th of June. When we're recording this, so it's a very balmy Wednesday evening. Uh, it's a bit flat this week, I think. Obviously, we had the great Pooh Bar, Mr. Johnson, tell us on Monday. Oh, well, we, we knew on Sunday in all the papers that uh, the unlocking has been postponed, actually, not for the two weeks that we all thought, but for four weeks. So, uh, I know, you know, again, there was lots of stuff in certainly in the kind of press and the beer press about again the challenge. I, I don't know really. I, I'm, you know, I'm sure. Many and, and certainly those big venues and the clubs have been really good struggle. But I have got to say, that most of the places that I've been to recently, they have been pretty busy. Yeah. And, and staff have been saying, you know, I think if you've got it right, if you've got the mix right, people are. I was chatting to the guys that, you know, my line regulars, my locals last weekend, they would say, look, it's good. We, we're not as busy in terms of people coming through the door, but people are coming, people are spending good money, um, and it's a nice atmosphere. So, you know. It's, it's just still this table service. It's yeah. very labour intensive. And I mean, it, it, it runs the staff ragged. Go on. Yeah, no, the staff are certainly in the corner at the moment uh, that I'm but, aware of. You but know. I think it's settling down. And, and again, that was discussing. It's in, and it's again on the opinions of Cathy Ramsey's discussion as well with me. I think people are getting used to it, both as punters and also staff and. I guess, you know, it's his system. His systems work well. He's got a good app or whatever, uh, and it's updated. I think it works well. Anyway, there's been loads on Beery Twitter in the news this week. We're not, I don't know if we're going to get into that, all the kind of Me Too and everything else and the various craft breweries are un under the spotlight. We're going to focus on what we know best, which is drinking good beer and visiting lovely towns and cities. So this week's uh, headline is A Bottle of Dog and a Schooner which we might explain oh. shortly. Uh, and I've got a little collection for those on YouTube of just some of our our memories of, of going up to the tune. Uh, Men to see Lindisfarne, actually, probably me and Bruce and, and Nick occasionally. Yeah. Uh, and I know, Bruce, you're a regular up there for the, for the footy. Uh, and there's a lovely picture of Malcolm McDonald with his lovely sideboards. What a legend. Put the time there. Are you season <laughs> ticket holder there, Bruce? I see that programme cost up five pence. Can you imagine it? And, uh, yeah. I think, They're you know what? I think I, now. That's why nobody buys them. I have got one, and, and I was trying to find I, I, that, that was not mine. I pinched that off the internet, but I have got a couple of Newcastle United. Mm. Uh, and it, like you say, they're, 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 well, I don't know. I, three pounds not bad though, because I mean, you go to like Wembley, and it's bloody ten pounds. So um, I think there was a plan was to try and keep them all under a certain price from the fans and things. Yeah. Well, how, uh, how much you how much you pay for a Beano nowadays? A comics about two pound fifty in it. Yeah, well, glossy out the Beanos used to pay point with kids, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, probably, uh, health and, and, probably health and safety now, bros. So they're not allowed to have it on that paper. We have yeah. talked about Nuki Brown uh, uh, again in the past, so I probably won't get into that too much detail. Obviously, uh, one of those classic beers that has again, sadly, has kind of very much disappeared up to a Wolverhampton brewery. Um, and we didn't mention we have mentioned there's a couple of uh, breweries which are uh, recreating versions of, of Newcastle Brown as well. And uh, and the bottle of dog, a dog is the old kind of play on. I'm going to see a man about a dog, which apparently was the, the colloquial term uh, in uh, in Newcastle to say you're going to the pub. Uh, and the schooner, and again, I don't know, Bruce. I, I it's probably me and you first picked this up when we went up to. Right. We used to go to some mad bar. I can't, I, I, for the hell, hell of me, I can't remember what it was called. Um, and we went in there one, and everybody drank. We're gonna go and grab man. Nail. Go on, bottles of brown nail and schooner, and we yeah. couldn't understand what they were saying. And when you went, went to the bar, a bottle of two bottles of brown, please. you got schooners or points. And basically, <laughs> a schooner was this nice little lovely half pint glass. And the idea was that you kept a head on your beer by yeah, topping it up. So you poured a bit, let it settle with a head, and then you kept topping it up. And I, I think we quickly realised if you were going to kind of um, blend in with the locals in Newcastle and not stick out like two uh, country garbage from North Yorkshire, uh, you asked for a pint of brown and a, and a schooner, so uh, and Nick probably got. And I, they were quite popular, weren't they? Sitting around, does they were? And there's a, there we go. Yeah. So we're saying that the idea was wasn't that you you top you, you kept your head on your beer by topping it up a little bit as well. 
So that's where the uh, the name for this week's podcast, A Bottle of Dog and a Schooner, which me and Bruce learnt uh, very quickly to, to blend in. Uh, and we have talked about this before, but, but obviously, again, Newcastle um, used to be, a, well, it is a very good, great beer town. It was, it's, you know, it's heyday. Uh, and I, again, I, did, I think we talked about this in another previous podcast, the blue star on the uh, brown ale bottles, the five points of that star represent the five former Newcastle breweries or the five original breweries in Newcastle, which again, in the end, came together and a quite a nice little kind of spirit community thing really to kind of work together. And that's why there's a blue star with the, which Newcastle still have on their shirts, don't they, Bruce? Or they certainly, I don't know what they still do these days. Um, but as always, similar story. So those breweries, um, you know, pretty much had a monopoly in Newcastle. Uh, there was then a little bit of a kind of merger in the uh, 70s when Scottish and Newcastle uh, breweries formed together. Uh, and certainly for our neck of the woods up in North Yorkshire, that, that was a very popular uh, brand of beers. Tartan, uh, William Younger's, uh, and obviously the Federation Brewery, Federation Beer. Uh, and then, as always, along come in 2008, he- Heineken Carlsberg, uh, buy it all out, and then stop brewing Newcastle Brown and send it off to Wolverhampton or Burton. Uh, and the SNN become a mob of pubco, and they, they still have they're still a pubco as well. So again, I don't think we're going to go down, going to go down that beer hall again because we've done quite a lot of that really and taking it through. Uh, and just to say now, again, I, I actually got this off the um, Newcastle camera site. It is again, it's, it's one of those towns where there's a massive resurgence in brewing. Uh, we'll, we again, we're just going to touch the surface tonight with a, a few great uh, bars and breweries, but there are some really good uh, breweries uh, in uh, in uh, Newcastle now. Big Lamb have been brewing beer since uh, about, they must be. They now. were quite early, weren't they? Yeah, because they Used were a bit Big like... Lamp brew beer in the uh, Spread Eagle down one day. Yeah, we were right. going in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And certainly I've had some of those time bank, I quite like those time bank beers and Wylam obviously are quite a, yeah, uh, yeah. quite a big craft beer place now as well. So a great vibe in city. And, and again, I think it's great that I know that a lot of these breweries have tap rooms or have taps, which is which is really good as well. So the usual quick catch up, Nick, what are you drinking tonight? I'm starting on the Half Moon Brewery Old Forge, which is a bottle conditioned beer, uh, brewed just outside York. And then I'm following that up with a prickly black option which is uh great newsomes uh that's yorkshire dialect for a hedgehog right and bruce what about yourself uh, because you were um, alert to me to this i was engrossed watching the aftermath of the football i've not been to the bridge yet so let's see go see what's we'll in see there, what there is. Right. well I'm, I'm i'm selling my homebrew i am and then i've got a bottle of proper job i'm going to move on i did try I, I, look i'm not i've got any northeast beers in my uh, mm. i'm getting a bit low actually i've got a couple yeah of me too we can, yeah, yeah. Getting a bit low. Um, and same, I was, I was looking for one of my Welsh beers and I haven't got any of that. I've got some Irish beer in the fridge, but nothing else. I uh, know just... uh, some, some of the breweries are doing some offers for Father's Day. Once again, Great Nooks, some are doing a mixed box of 12 beers and they're even throwing in a free pint glass for 23 quid. Uh, you'd have to pay the postage, but I still think they're one of the cheapest beer boxes going around, really. Yeah, uh, I've just seen one tonight. Limestone in Stone, they were offering 10 beers, uh, two bags of crisps, two bags of nuts, uh, a, 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 a pint, pint glass for 25 quid delivered, which that was, was really good yeah, value, wasn't yeah, it, as well? Yeah. Just, just one quick one to pick up. We mentioned that, I think with last podcast, that I know, Nick, you'd been on the Brass Castle Emergency a Bitter. Mm. So, and I know you had a bit, I think Steve at the uh, Royal Oak had a little bit of a theory about why it was. I've actually a bit of digging here, and it's quite a nice one, maybe something for the Eden Camp here, that apparently um, Emergency Bitter was a classic bitter recipe that dates back to 1955, it was actually a Cold War recipe, and Emergency Bitter was brewed to remember Operation Teapot, which is when they were doing nuclear tests in Nevada. Um, the Pentagon and the British Secret Service were looking at things that might survive a nuclear a, a nuclear attack, a nuclear bomb. So they were brewing, th- they were making bread, they were brewing various things and pickles, and they put all this stuff in a whatever a shed, and they blew it up or they set off a nuclear explosion, and Beer was one of the well, canned beer um, was better than bottled, surprisingly. Uh, but the cans of emergency bitter actually not only did they uh, survive the blast, but they also were were alleged to be drinkable for emergency use. So that's that's where the name comes from. So it is actually a little bit of a nice little story there about kind of Cold War, which again I, I've not heard before. So just to catch up on that one. It was certainly one of the best brass castle pints I've had in a while. Yeah, you mentioned that. Yeah, because it was, you know, it was traditional. So, 
And again, just before we, we crack on, we'll do again a couple more roundups. Again, as always, um, it's, I always like to try and promote the local camera branches. Obviously, they're having a bit of a tough time at the moment mm. um, in not really seeing, and, and certainly the uh, beer mags. So the ones for the Tyneside and Northumberland camera is called Canny Betty. Uh, and as always, you can get past copies on the Tinter web if I if you look for the, the Tyneside and Northumberland camera uh, uh, site. Uh, they, again, they don't seem to have done any um, over the last 12 months, I guess, to get its advertising that you must the cost of doing it. Uh, but again, I even I had, a quick, I had a quick look at these these ones from 2019 and 2020. That's always really good read, lots of really good interest in. Um, okay, some of it's out of date now with it being dated, but just, you know, pubs, ideas, breweries. So as always, a really good read as well. So it's been a couple of weeks since we were last together, which uh, it seems a long, long time ago now, but we had a great time uh, in uh, York and Harrogate and Maresborough. Um as, as I mentioned, I think in the podcast when I did the kind of the intro to it, it was a um, we had a few funs and games with the recordings. Our first attempt at going live, and we did get these kind of strange eunuch high pitched voices at various points. But uh, you can just about listen to it. Um, I think actually the podcast version for somebody is better than the YouTube version. So if you if you got a bit fed up on YouTube, uh, maybe try and catch some on the podcast ones. Which again, I managed to kind of splice that a little bit better as well. So there's a little bit more stuff in there as well. Uh, but I think the good thing was it was only 45 minutes long, so I'm determined tonight to push these two on. Uh, I will try and get through this in about 45 minutes. Hey, it should do more talking than anybody I know, else. I know, I know. Right, uh, quickly then. So, beery highlights. Bruce, you went to the fantastic Malmaze on rooftop, whatever it is. I did. It opened last Thursday. It was the former Aviva building in York, seven storeys high. Uh, now we're Malmaze and Hotel. Not a usual haunt, but uh, uh, bookings are like uh, lottery tickets, but I booked up weeks ahead. The cancel previous booking was a bit late. Just by a stroke of luck, uh, uh, we managed to get in on Saturday. Um, uh, so we had two of my uh, uh, friends who were knocking on a bit. It was lovely. Everything Christ, was it looks like the opening season Macbeth there, Bruce. When shall we three <laughs> meet again in Thunder Lightning or in Rain? Uh, again, those on YouTube, Bruce has sent some cracky photos, actually, of, of the three of you. I know there's one with your missus as well, which I, didn't, I, I ran out of space a little bit. Uh, but certainly, as you said, we get fantastic views up there on that new territory, oh, don't you? It is. I mean, it's but, fantastic. And I have to say, you know, I mean, uh, I was there at five o'clock of the family and it was red hot. Now, by we were going to get at nine o'clock and uh, it was great. And as the sun went down, it got incredibly cold. Yeah. But they do have blankets on, on tap. <laughs> so they're, they're great. Looks, that looks, like, looks like a community social services visit. <laughs> Good stuff. And then Bruce's second picture is what he's claiming to be the biggest beer garden in the world. Yeah, it was went... insane. We uh, went to uh, Stutton. Um, for the first ever time, which is a bit bizarre because it's only about five miles down the road. Um, Sam Smith's pub in Stutton. Uh, Stutton's a village which you were, is not far off the A64, not far from Tadcaster, but it feels incredibly rural because it's got a, a very small road which can just accommodate one car and there are regular passing places. And then you go to this uh, really uh, nice little village that's not been un uh, overdeveloped at all. Um, the Heron Hounds is a pub there, Sam Smith's pub, again, um, so turn the century, uh, stone flag floors, uh, beams, lovely couple who run it. Um, they were turning out as well, fantastic, uh, uh, it's a standard menu, but they're doing great things for it. The chips were to die for. But what was astonishing was the land on the pub. I mean, it's pretty well known that an awful lot of the Samson's pub, uh, obviously the, the money that they are worth as an asset must vastly outweigh any future projections on the pub. This is a case in point. The car park alone was colossal, but then we were staggered to walk into the uh, to the back of the pub. And the beer garden, in reality, is a huge, huge paddock <laughs> that goes down. The, it was a wash with rabbits uh, that uh, that when we got there. Um, in fact, you see me son in the distance. He went down to look at the rabbits. So I ran away. I thought but, I thought that was a golf flag there, bro. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's Ben. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. If you're coming to him from York and uh, put... Uh, yeah. When you get near Tadcaster, put Stutton, in, Stutton into your sat nav. It's literally a five minute drive. It is an absolute glorious, yeah. glorious pub. So, I think at this point, we've got to do our normal Sam Smith's warning that Sam Smith's pub will be mentioned uh, in this evening's podcast. It wouldn't be a trip, would it, with us without uh, at least one or two Sam Smith's pubs? And I know Nick's got a couple yeah. uh, planned out. So, uh, my quick ones again, I'm, I've, I've not been in many pubs, unfortunately. I've been mainly in kind of restaurants and craft, craft bars, but. Uh, I picked, I mentioned these brews actually. I picked up these from Waitrose. Um, uh, interestingly, uh, Peroni have just, re have just um, released some Grand Reservas and they did two of these. There was a, uh, a Rossa one and another one as well. And then they were, they were less than two quid actually in uh, Waitrose for 
quite I got, they were kind of odd sized bottles as well. Mm. Um, and I think you know for a what a macro lager actually they were, they were interesting. Um, as you say, they were very very uh, very lively. Um, and then the other one which I came across again, this was in Waitrose uh, again under two pounds was a black sheep. And apparently they're trying they're trying some craft mm. beers. And this is a five barrel project. And this was a mango milkshake IPA which was 5.1%. And that was £1.50 a can in Waitrose, which was interesting. Like like so, the can, I'm not sure about the, yeah, uh, the flavour. It, it wasn't, uh, to be honest, it wasn't very milkshake it, it was more of a lager. Thank uh, God for that. But then my highlight was a bit, was quite strange. I went, we went, uh, uh, someone was doing DV, so me and the missus went out for a quick uh, square around Nutsford, and we ended up in the Botanist, uh, which I've never been there, but quite nice, actually, the Botanist. Um, mm. And they had, actually, they had quite a range of different beers. I know cast, but quite, quite a... Um, Eclectic range, really. Yeah. Spanish, uh, American, Beaver Town, and, and very. I, I was actually after a Perry because they have a Perry on their uh, menu, but he said they hadn't, they hadn't, it was French. So he said, Oh, have you ever tried the, the, the Schofferhofer? I said, No. He said, Well, give it a try. Said, it's like a Radlow. It's a grapefruit wheat beer. Um, and you know what? It was it was bloody lovely. Uh, mm. Only 2.8%. Yeah. And, I, and yeah. I, that was a looking for, really. But and it was quite grapefruity and it was. You know, a cross between I don't know a kind of a shandy and a um, I don't know an alcohol pot, but you know what? It was it was damn tasty. And I took that one again uh, if I was passing through. Um, well, so, I so, wrong. so I mean, certainly flavour of grapefruit, as you know, our old man always when uh, the new six of hops came out and they started uh, making different beers, he always used to complain, "Oh, they're messing around with flavours, they're putting flavours, and oh, it tastes of grapefruit, tastes of grapefruit." So that grapefruity citrus taste has been around for a while, hasn't it? So yeah, yeah. I suppose a pink grapefruit would uh, would work yeah, well. That was quite nice, quite refreshing. Uh, then I just think about his beer highlights just to get ready, and <laughs> Nick came back with this one. Uh, similar, <laughs> another, another table beer, a two point three percent whip it pale ale yeah. from the Harveston, uh, Edinburgh at the Harveston. Yeah, well, their their famous one is their bitter and twisted, which is is oh, quite yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was and, delicious. But, uh, as, as you can see there, it only cost me 39 pence, which is cheaper than a can of Coke. <laughs> Mad, isn't it? It's, it. it's still 2.3%, you know, so you can buy a you can buy a can of can of beer for cheaper than a can of Coke and a can of Fanta. Yeah. So it, it was it was all right for rest, yeah, a little little short drink for yeah. refreshing the thirst. Yeah. Home bag is uh, a real home of bag and beer, isn't it? I mean the the uh, well, they had the Lakeland range, the Coniston range up in uh, York recently, 89p, 99p, one pound nine uh, b- b- bottle for uh, depending on the strength. And I think it's all because I think the, it's, um, they've obviously got links to that Halewood International Company we touched on weeks ago, who bought um, the brewery in the late district, haven't they? I think it's all their brands are selling now, but cheap, yeah. cheap beer. Yeah, like mm. you said, there's quite a range in there as well. Uh, just, just, we'll just do one beer news because there's a lot of beer news at the moment and we probably don't have time or the, probably the expertise and the know what to go into all the depth of that. But I'll just I, I mentioned this, Bruce. I don't know if you saw this, Nick. This was somebody, I think, tweeted this. This for this was at um uh was it Hamden Park? They played didn't they on uh not Hamden, they played in Glasgow, didn't they? I think in Scotland the other night. Uh the Scotland Euro game. Uh if you were going to that that stadium to watch Scotland play, this is what your choice of beer was on the drinks app. And it's basically Heineken in two versions, either Heineken or Heineken Zero, and Strongbow, and either Strongbow nor normal. Or strong but original, or I presume there's another one. Is there is a, and, it, and it was it? it's eight, eight, it's there's only two choices. And secondly, it was six pound a pint for a fizzy lager in a plastic in a plastic bottle. It's, you know, I just think it's a mad shame. And I know it's, I mean, Bruce, yeah, you probably could hang it in one of the uh, Euro 2020, 2021, yeah. where we are sponsors, yeah. but yeah. You know, I, I'm still, I'm sure they would sell a shed load more beer at a more, you know, but probably more expensive. If yeah. you had a decent choice, and it's uh, what always gets me, if you go into the posh bit, you often get a really good choice of beers, mm. and you just treat, you know, treat the normal fan like cattle fodder, and, that is and there you go. so I just thought that was just to share with people, really. So we're heading up to the northeast. I think we, again, so you guys have always probably stopped off at Durham because oh, um, yeah. you've normally again gone on the train, and I think from York it's probably. It's a bit more than halfway, isn't it? But it's a nice little stop. Well, and the, about, five, about 35, 40 minutes to Durham and 10 miles to Newcastle. Yeah. And then it's the train station, again, is handy in both cities, isn't it? That you can, you know, it's, it's walkable. Uh, Durham is a fantastic city if, if you've never been. It kind of looms up, doesn't it? As you're coming on the train yeah, or on the yeah. A1, it, the cathedral and the castle loom up on that hill there. 
Um, and it's, I guess it's a bit like Lincoln, but with a nicer river, I always feel. Uh, it, you walk up quite a steep way to get up to the uh, Catholic Cathedral. I think, I, don't know, I think the Castle University is always a bit of a disappointment. The cathedral is quite nice. Um, yeah. I always think it's a bit of a disappointment when you get up the top there, when you, you make all your way through there. It's a, bit, it's a bit empty, isn't it, that big open it, space? It is, um, yeah. Something there. And I guess it's a bit of a city of two halves. You've got a very old bit around the castle and the thing, and then a newer a newer part. I know there's, there's certainly a new in Weatherspoons um, yeah. on that new side of the kind of inner city ring road, whatever it is. Uh, and just a couple of facts about Durham. Again, me and Bruce looked at it before. Uh, Durham was one of the first uh, heritage sites, mainly because of the castle and the uh, university and the uh, the cathedral, all very much on the top of the hill. It's also interesting the first place where mustard was invented, not not in Norfolk. Uh, and Durham's claim is that it was a uh, a lady called I've got her name, Mrs. Clements who grounded up mustard seeds in order to make get more flavour out of them. She created a paste, it became popular, and actually, in the, in the end, they sold the recipe to Coleman's uh, at, at some point in the late 1800s, and that's why we think of, of North, Norfolk and, and mustard. Um, the world's oldest single arch railway bridge, and then, do you guys know this? the name of this team that won the first ever World Cup? Is it Bishop Auckland? Yeah, Bishop Auckland. Mm. So um, they Bishop was Bloody that, Auckland. It was uh, <laughs> it was a film board, wasn't it? Uh, Tim Healy in, F- in FIFA's early days, which obviously was a French organisation. They wanted to establish a, uh, a World Cup, a where they call it Mondial. The, the, uh, they asked England to come, and England being very snooty said, "Oh no, no, no! There's no point in us coming. We'll win. Uh, we'll we'll find a team." Um, and by all accounts, um, they sent a team. Up, they just put the initial WA. And the officials in France thought it was Woolwich Arsenal, which was the name of obviously Arsenal. I thought, oh, great. And in the end, this little minus team from Bishop Auckland turned up. I, I, no, I thought, in the film it, I thought in the film it was West Bromwich Albion. And it was, no, it was West Woolwich Arsenal. Because uh. West Auckland, it's at West, they're actually called West Auckland the team. West British, uh, Bishop Auckland. Yeah, but in the end, they actually won the, they actually won the cup. Mm. Uh, so there we go. And of course, it still has the world's largest union event. Again, Jen, do you know what that is? The Reminders Gala. The Reminders Gala, which apparently still, I don't know what it, I presume it was, it was shut off last year. I might be going ahead. It's normally late summer, isn't it, when they have it and yeah. they have a huge parade. So, big boozy day, what was that? Yeah. A good boozy day, absolutely. Uh, and again, I quite like it because uh, in the cathedral is where uh, Cuthbert, and actually Bede is also buried there as well, but uh, Cuthbert's one of my kind of favourite saints. So, uh, Last time I went up there, here I am. I'm paying homage to Cuthbert, uh, whose body was was whipped away from Lindisfarne uh, when the horrible Vikings and, and, and Aha arrived. Um, they took him to the safety, the safety of Durham. So, uh, Bruce, I've asked Bruce and Nick because they do this uh, journey a little bit more than me. So they're going to mainly give us the pubs and I've got a few choice at the end and one of the places that I remembered. So, Bruce, you're going to kick us off. And you, in fact, you both said the must visit in Durham if you're not going to any other pub, is the Victoria. So yeah. tell us about the Vic Bruce in Durham. It is. Well, as you can see, it's a perfectly uh, preserved Victorian uh, pub. And I mean, it's got, uh, it's got one, two, three rooms, has it? Uh, yeah, three rooms, of course. Yeah. Um, fires uh, in all three rooms, of course, which is fantastic. Uh, but the place absolutely gleams. Um, to me, it's more like a, a living, working museum, really. But I say it's got a great mix of locals and regulars. And it's astonishing when you go there and see the, uh, the furniture they've got and the artifacts they've got, uh, the wood, the stained glass, the place, uh, that it's a proper working pub. And the, it, it, it's immaculate, isn't it, Nick? That's what always strikes me. It's absolutely immaculate. Um, it yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those pubs that I've, I've spoken about. I wouldn't call it a comfortable pub, but it's yeah. certainly unique. It's certainly traditional inside, you know, in terms of, it's named after Queen Victoria, and it's certainly the Victorian interior. Uh, and it, it's cosy. It's cosy mm-hmm. in terms of, like the fires in, and you know, you get people that obviously the regulars sit around the bar, and then there's not much extra room apart from the bench seating, and even more so in the little back snug area. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's definitely you got in first, Bruce. This one, it was on my list. You remember, Bruce, last time that we actually went to Durham, we we started in Newcastle and worked back. And in fact, yeah, yeah. we had a bit, we had a better experience in Durham. I think it was about the 18th of the December, was, 2018, yeah. and it was a. You always talk about this doing these pubs at night when it's wet and miserable outside. Well, it, it was when we went in, and it was when we came out. But uh, 
by then uh, we weren't worried too much. So it was certainly worth it in that respect. <laughs> and again, we've got some pictures on there of Nick, Nick and Bruce. And you know, that like journey there, and Bruce had a very wet looking Victoria. Mm. And again, you can see the Chrissy, the Chrissy Deco was up. Sorry, I think you're right at the time in there as well. So yeah, I think you both said that's a definite pub to go into. And I think, again, a good good range of cast. cast I don't think you find many, many craft beer in there. A good range of proper craft beers, I'd imagine. And they've got about three, was... three or four rooms upstairs as well, I believe. They're not yeah. and look, they're about eight, eighty five pound a night. It'd be a great place to stay in. Yeah. The other up. surprising thing is as well, on your way up there, I always knew that obviously Durham had a prison and it's supposed to be a high security prison. Mm. But I didn't realise it's actually right in the middle of the town. Yeah, yeah. You actually walk past the walls of the prison yeah. that's surrounded yeah. by houses and pubs and other buildings, you're yeah. thinking, well. This is like, there's some major serious nutters in this prison here, and yet it's right in the centre of the town. Yeah. So that's the other thing that's uh, surprising, you know, when you walk up uh, up there around to the, uh, down to the Vic. So if you've got maybe a couple of hours in Durham, and it's, it's a fairly compact place, so you can certainly do a couple of hours and maybe get there first thing in the morning, or as these guys said, maybe on your working your way back. And uh, Nick, you've got then three other choices which, which you thought would be worth, you know, again, if you had that hour and a half or so. So I don't run through. You've got the Dun Cow, the Swan and Three Signets and the Shakespeare. Yeah, well, that's the problem doing reverse order because the Shakespeare is the one that you would say is, is more in the centre of the town. Mm. That's on the road that takes you up to the Minster. Now, once again, the last time me and Bruce were out that way, we, we'd had a bit of a poor experience in Newcastle, really, haven't we, Bruce? And I think the Shakespeare mm. was the first place in Durham. And I actually, we, we got a beer in there and I actually went back to the barman and said, you know, we've been in three or four places in Newcastle and actually this is the best pint we've had all day. Yeah. Surprisingly, um, they have a small selection of real ales on, um, sort of three or four, and they tend to be from the national brewers. But surprisingly, they always have London uh, Fuller's, Pride, uh, Fuller's London Pride on as a, as a regular. You know, it uh, makes me wonder how much further north you can go to find... London Pride on quite regularly. Yeah. Um, and I can't remember. I think I had a pint of Pride, Bruce, and I think we had another one in there as well, didn't they? One of the more local ones. It's very um, good but it's quite well for people from the uni, isn't it? I wonder if there are a lot of the... Uh, yeah. The, yeah, the, yeah. yeah. Because obviously Dur Durham is up top on as, a, as an international um, university, isn't it? So they will get people from all over the country plus all around the world. It's quite a small pub. It's got the, the, the main front little bar room there. And then the slightly bigger lounge at the back. So it's only sort of a couple of rooms, but it's it's easy enough to find. And then, as I say, it's on the way up to Cathedral. Now, if you double back on yourself a little bit and bob down a street that runs down to the river, the River Weir, you go over, I think it's, is it Elvet? Elvet Bridge or something yeah, like that. Elvet Bridge, yeah. Yeah. And on the left hand side, you mentioned it earlier, Mike, it wouldn't be a beer trip without a uh, Sam Smith's pub. So there's a big old Sam Smith's pub right on the banks of the weir there. It's the uh, Swan and Three Signets. And I know once again, we went in there, Bruce, and we spent a jolly half an hour talking about what we'd always talk about to the staff in there, about their illustrious leader <laughs> and the fact that it was it, it was just before Christmas. There were a lot of people out, obviously, with the Christmas shopping. A lot of people wouldn't normally go in a pub, but it's Christmas. They're not Christmas shopping. Let's go in for a, a drink. And people pulling the credit cards out. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, it's only cash only. It's cash only. It's only... Yes. You were hot. <laughs> you know, in this day and age, what you don't create, create are debit cards. So we had a chat about that. I chat about other things as well. But yeah, it's it, it's one of those pubs that slightly rougher, uh, as I remember it, than a lot of Sam Smith's pubs. But I dare say uh, it, it's been it's been looked after. They've been in now and and, and done it up. And again, um, on a nice day, because again, I will look, a few pictures here. The picture we've got on YouTube is that the shadow is actually the bridge that Nick's saying. Yeah. So I think yeah. it's taking the bridge and where the trees in the bottom left corner, that's where it drops down to the river. So it's quite a nice little area there, isn't it? Sit out and it's a multi um, floor pub, isn't it? There's about three or four different floors in it as it goes down from bridge height to river height as well, which is a nice terrace at the, at the top there as well. Mm. I, mean, I do believe this was a pub that was uh, sort of built from scratch and it's a little bit characterless inside and the lighting's very. Harsh. I mean, when you see the lovely job he does on some of his pubs, I'm quite surprised what how they what, what they've done here. Really, it's not. It's quite harsh inside, isn't it? The, the very bright pub, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I'll be honest, Bruce. This wasn't on my because Mike suggested we have just a couple of pubs, yeah, and yeah. this wasn't of my two. Uh, and if I'm including the Victoria, then it would have been sort of fourth place. Yeah. But just if you're going out towards uh, where I'm, I'm leading you to now to the Duncow, then it's on the way. Yeah. And, and as I say, I would probably prefer to spend a day in Durham 
rather than actually going all the way up to Newcastle to come back again. Mm-hmm. I just think the pubs in Durham are a lot more conducive for having a nice little walk around and a nice little tour. Like so, so. go on then. The last pub you yeah, so carrying on being long on the left hand side. Yeah, yeah. I think it's called Old Albert Street. Uh, if you want to see some stunning architecture, then on the right hand side, I think it's one of the hot. Is it Hotel Indigo that's taking it over? It used to be Old County Hall. And they have a bar. Well, just walk into where the reception is, and it's 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 um, it's Victorian, but it's um, which one is it? It's the um, medieval. It's the Renaissance-ish. What do they call it? Um, oh, anyway, things to do with Dracula and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, Somebody's shouting at me now. Gothic. Gothic. Yeah, Gothic. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, and and they've got a bar as well, which is a big central round bar, and 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 it's very popular with the ladies having the cocktails and things like that. So I literally walked oh, in there just just to have a look at the the rooms rather than going in for a drink. So carrying up there, and then up on the left hand side, you've got the Duncow. Now this is reputed to be the oldest pub in Durham. Um, anybody on the YouTube see at the top left hand corner there, little uh, mock Tudor timber building. Inside, it, it's very traditional, not traditional in terms of turn of the 19th century, but more so that 1940s to 1960s interior, sort of varnish one and things like that. And once again, not a massive range of real ales, but three or four decent ones. Once again, popular with a very cosmopolitan um, clientele, uh, popular with the students, of course. And in fact, during the lockdown, the last 12 months, I was just looking back at their Facebook and it seems that... Um, that announced that they were in dire straits. So, in fact, it was the the uh, the men's hockey team at uh, Durham University started a GoFundMe page for them just to try and get a bit of uh, cash together to keep them from running. Yeah. And so the landlord and landlady said, well, thanks very much indeed. It's not quite as bad as uh, the, yeah. the newspaper headline may have made yeah. out, uh, but thanks for your support. So, obviously, it's well loved by the students, well loved by quite a cosmopolitan crowd. Yeah. And then if you actually walk out the Duncow, cross over the road and then sort of loop back, then you'll come back to the Victoria. So you've got a nice, nice little circuit to do there. Okay, good stuff. So there's four good pubs there that uh, certainly if you want to jump out of Durham and say it's a lovely, lovely town. As we mentioned there, it's a student town and a lot of students who live in the universities are the main campuses right at the top there. So uh, again, you'd get a mix of students in term time as well. Now, again, always a bit, a bit random, so it's not quite on the way to Newcastle, <laughs> but roughly halfway between uh, Durham and Newcastle is the Beamish Living Museum of the North. And certainly when we were at school, we all got hiked up there at least once every year to go and yeah. uh, pot around. And in the Beamish Museum, and I think you'd have to pay things to get in there, um, as well as it being a fantastic chip shop in the Rightly Bruce that's still using... Yeah, yeah, the coal-fired range. Coal-fired range, yeah. Uh, there is the Sun Inn, and actually, yeah. I can remember, I, I can still... You know what, I was trying to... I was trying to think what beer it was because uh, they had a special beer, and I remember it being absolutely gorgeous. Last time I went it was a day like today. I remember just sitting in there. I ended up staying in there. Um, big lamp it. last time I was there. Big lamp. Right. Okay. Maybe it was. Uh, but the sun in, it, and again, it's one of these where they actually move this brick by brick from again yeah. Bishop Auckland. That's where it was uh, going to be knocked down, and when they were setting up the museum, uh, they moved it uh, brick by brick. So it's quite a nice pub. Very traditional. It, well, to be honest. It looks like most of the pubs we go in, so it's it's there. It's supposed to be given a Victorian view of of, uh, of a, a Victorian pub, uh, but to us it's, it's very similar to the Victoria when you look at the picture that we've got there as well, isn't it? So, so there we go. So get back on the train at Durham. Um, you probably have to get off. I don't know where you have to get to Beamish, but anyway, it was just it was there for a bit of a bit of novelty value. And of course, one of the beauties of going to Newcastle is it's got a little bit like York, an absolutely fantastic George Stevenson. LENR station, which is, I think, one of the most majestic entrances to a to a, um, a, a city. You come over the bridge, don't you? Come over the time, the, the, the time bridge on your right. You, uh, the station's quite high up, isn't it? So you come yeah. in at quite a, quite a height, and you look over the time, and obviously you're in a good old day to shipyards. And it's one of these, um, you know, beautiful, um, whatever they are, vaulted ceilings. Uh, Always a buzz going on. The metro actually goes from uh, Newcastle Station as well. So it is. It's a, it's a fantastic, fantastic place to arrive. In fact, I've got some um, pictures of, of my lad there just looking at all of it. I, he hadn't, he'd only probably been to York when he was little. And we, just, we, we got off the metro here. And he just, he was like, I go, wow. And I said, that's exactly how I felt when I first came there when I was like 13 or 14. It's a be- beautiful place, beautiful place. There's no, there's no, there is a bar, but there's not a tap or anything, is there? On the uh, station there's there's a head of steam. Yeah. Now and then they've got a what's the what's the new pub? Is it Centurion? Again, I think Centurion, isn't it? 
Big choice right. of beers in there. So there's two on two in the station now, yeah. Yeah. But you're fairly central. You come out of the station, there's a nice kind of open square. There's actually the cathedral, the Catholic cathedral to the left hand side there. And then Bruce, you're on the first choice. So your first choice would be to head slightly downhill, isn't it, from the well, station yeah. to the Crown Posada. It is again, apps by far, by far, a country mile, the best pub in Newcastle. Uh, one of the one of the finest pubs of the country. Uh, so again, another Victorian uh, pub, and look at how that's preserved as well. So this you're looking at it from the bottom of the bar. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, so you come in the door, swing right, and right through you've got a fantastic um, Victorian snug uh, facing you. So panelled uh, stained glass there, and you've got the uh, sort of a, an island bar then that comes down. They've also got a gramophone record playing uh, tracks on there. Uh, you've got this wonderful. Uh, Lighting there, I'm just lighting, and it's a pub. It's always full of people. Uh, always real friendly crowd. I was in here about ten days before the first lockdown. We've seen Newcastle play. It was packed, but people were like, "Oh, come on, let's sit up, sit down, love, find your seat." You know, really friendly crowd of people going there. Big choice of real ale. Uh, massive big uh, baps serving like ham and peas pudding. It's just an absolute cracking place. You can't go to Newcastle and not go to the Crown Posada. It, like the Victoria, without that, they're one of the best ten pubs in the country. You, you okay. could miss it though, really, couldn't you though, Bruce? I mean, it's you down the street because yeah, it's, yeah. it's heading down towards the quayside and there's nothing much else on that street. Yeah, there's some big uh, on it buildings because obviously, once again, it will be in the uh, the ship owners and things yeah, like that and even the bonding yeah. warehouses. Yeah. But, you know, if, if you're not looking for it, you could walk past it without realising it's actually a pub. I mean, on the picture there, you know, the sign's well lit, but um, it doesn't really look like a pub from the outside, does it? No, no, it doesn't. It's it's narrow. It's uh, um, it's virtually uh, virtually windowless, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Really much, yeah. Yeah, quite a long, thin one, isn't it? Quite a, like yeah. the picture there is a lot of these long benches as you go through there. But uh, so I was trying to find out who, who owns it. I, I couldn't really find out whether it's independent. It doesn't seem to be a pub co. I don't know. I, don't yeah, know. I, think I would is. think. Yeah, I would think it's independent, Nick Bros. Yeah. I'm sure it's independent. It's been for years. Yeah. It? I'm just looking at Watts Pub. It's, a, Watts no, it's not a pub. It's a Newcastle institution at the Grand Passage. Yeah. 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 Okay. And then, Nick, you've got the next choice, which is the Red House, which is down to. Yeah, well, I, I would have gone for the Grand Passage. So, coming around the corner, I'm thinking, I mean, all my choices are actually based around the quayside and in the shadow of uh, the Tyne Bridge there. So, the Red House. So, once again, looking at the picture, originally it was obviously on the right hand side there. Uh, but they've now seemed to have, have taken the whole of that section of the building. Yeah. Uh, whilst it sits it's on the quayside, you've got a pretty wide, busy road in front of you before you actually get to yeah, the river. Yeah. But once again, uh, I don't know whether it's always been like this, but they've certainly taken up most of the pavement now with outdoors, outdoor seating. So certainly the ability to uh, sit a lot of people down. Um, well known for its, its real ale, but also known for its pie, mash and liquor as well. So a variety of different pies uh, supplied by, I think it's Amble uh, Butchers. Oh. Um, so maybe a good stopping off place for something to eat. I wouldn't necessarily recommend sitting eating on the uh, on the pavement, but um, yeah, um, homemade and pies it, and a, a good good uh, good selection of real ale. And again, that bit on the side, again, you're looking on YouTube, the white is quite an old building. I remember me, we, there's a couple of blue packs, there, isn't it, about um, the kind of gallery. I mean, look, that looks very medieval, doesn't it? It's... Uh, like you say, you can imagine all the old shit. Yeah, it, 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 it appears to be, doesn't it? I mean, once yeah. again, you know, the, the actual Red House itself looks to be an old merchantman's house. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. that bit there, whether that was a warehouse or what, I'm not, I'm yeah, not sure. Uh, but I say they certainly, uh, you know, they've yeah. got the whole of that building now. Um, so it's... It's a street level where they built it. It looks higgledy-piggledy, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. 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 Uh, and then, Nick, you're just up the corner of getting yours is next choice, which is the uh, Bridge Hotel. Yeah. yeah, so come here. I mean, you said about this being on two levels and the train station comes in quite high. So from the quayside, it is quite a, a walk mm, back up to get mm. up to that level again, where the castle is. Obviously, New Castle, uh, where the original castle was. You've got some some flights of stairs, which I know, you know, we sometimes go to the, the weather spoons on the quayside there as well. And you've got that, uh, you've got that climb up all the stairs. Yeah. So we found this one last time, Bruce. And I, I, I would have to say, really, it actually looks better on the outside or more inviting outside. Than the interior. Now, I read a review the other day and somebody said it was a bit like a working men's club inside, in that it doesn't quite deliver inside because I think, you know, the building has been ripped to bits by the, uh, yeah, the pub co or the owners of it. Um, very busy on football. It is a big old square pub and there are different drinking areas in there. 
there are still some panels and some um, stained glass and some etched glass. Um, and they had five or six different beers on there. If you remember, Bruce, I had quite a strong one in there because it was it's Christmas. Quite strong, weren't they? Yeah. And uh, obviously Christmas tends to get these these silly drinks if people are just out for one or two when they're doing the shopping. But as we were on a bit of a session, um, it was one of those that, uh, yeah, you, you didn't want much of really. It had a, I can't remember what it was, a bit of a weird flavour to it. But um, all in all, it, uh, it was a place where you can, you can go in there, maybe a few of you as well, and, uh, you know, a good selection of beers and, and find somewhere to sit down. Not, again, you've got a cracky view of the time bridge there. Well, you? yeah. like I said, you're on that level, you're on that, that higher level there as well. Okay, great. We're moving well, on to the It's much bigger than that picture of Piers, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, mm. Bruce, uh, your, your next choice, Bruce, and I guess is that this is your one of your watering holes, although on a match day, I bet it must be absolutely mad. And I noticed that it was called that fresh for a while, wasn't it, with the strawberry? But the strawberry is, again, a quite a well known pub in Newcastle, virtually hanging on the side of St. James's. Uh, Sports Direct, whatever it's called these days, stadium, uh, almost overshadowed by whatever end that is. Yeah, that it's, it's, it's infamous, end, isn't it? It's, it's infamous. I've never been in there, but I've always wondered, you know, what a what a location for a for yeah. a pub. And I, I did read once why it was called the Strawberry, and I can't remember now. Maybe you know, bros. I don't know, I've forgotten myself. I know. I, I, uh, so, but yeah, I mean, like I say, normally we include this, but I say, as a Newcastle fan myself, uh, Strawberry, uh, you know, I, Probably the most famous uh, uh, football ground pub in the country, I would say, because uh, it's the only one there. I know that around Anfield and uh, I mean, there are Arsenal the same club, but this place is insane on the match day. Well, those days are probably gone now for a long time. Inside, not too much seating. Uh, um, I was going to say, bro, so I can just imagine it just be big, one big empty space with like little yeah. shelves around the edge. Probably. And if there's yeah. any central you know, pillars like I can just see where the Newcastle legends are there. Maybe yeah. little shelves around there, but literally you all basically stand up. It is, but it's amazing how it actually functions because it is just a solid mass of humanity. As to be fair, is the yeah. uh, weather spoons down in, nearby and all the pubs yeah, of the yeah. way. But uh, yeah, so you've got to go to football, but we've got the strawberry city, one of the great football. Because again, as Bruce said, there, St. James's Park is very much the city centre stadium, isn't it? So, you know, it, I right. think. Probably it's one of the most cities. Mm. I mean, I know Anfield and, and, and Goodish are a little bit out of the city centre of Liverpool and, you know, the same with Old Trafford and uh, and the Etihad. But, uh, you know, St. James's dominates Newcastle city centre, doesn't it? It's up on the yeah. hill. You can see it. You know, you can hear it. The lights are on. Uh, you've got, well, you're, I'm going to say, you know, Debenham's about a spit across the road from it. So you've got a massive shopping centre just on one side, haven't you? So it must be, okay, it must be manic on a Saturday afternoon and, I guess it's one of those pubs that you walk to, and that you walk, you walk, everybody streams up on one of those kind of lowery pitches where everybody's streaming up the hills from Biker and from the uh, whatever gate set across the bridges, etc. So, uh, yeah, good pub, good pub to put in. Uh, and then again, I think all three of us would have said this pub, and again, it's our Weatherspoon's warning, uh, but down under the that's the um, they call that the high level bridge, don't they? That bridge, yeah, the, is, is that the, 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 the Met railway bridge? Um, and the uh, time bridge you can just see in the background right on the side of the picture on YouTube. And it's the quayside. And again, I think, as Nick, we've been here a few times. I think last time I had breakfast in here with my Mrs. and my lad. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a fantastic old building yeah. uh, right on the river side. Um, and it's been done really well. And I, I can't fault it. They always have some really good, as always, some good northeastern beers in there. They do a crack, definitely a cracking breakfast. Uh, and it's a very well run with a nice little seating area when the weather's nice as well to watch the ships go by the time. Yeah, it is. I think, I mean, it doesn't feel like a weather spoon. No, right? it doesn't. No. That, mm. thing about it, it doesn't feel like a weather spoon. Yeah. Mm. That's the well worth of it. Yeah. Again, Newcastle must have more weather spoons than probably most of the other cities and towns. There's quite a few in Newcastle, isn't there? There's a good, good right, range yeah. of weather spoons. You've got the large um, number one about just a, about 30 seconds right from the station. Yeah. Yeah. And then, Bruce, we're on to your one now. So we're going from the quayside. If you, well, it'd be a long walk. Well, we jump. Oh on no, you wouldn't walk it. Don't go the metro. You remember? Metro. You could walk it. You can't walk it to the time oh, from it's there. Time miles. It's probably nine miles away. I think. <laughs> it's, it's quicker than a ferry. So, so we're now in <laughs> time mouth, which is kind of the mouth of the time, uh, which is very uh, famous for the big long piers. I'm sure you've seen uh, property pictures of them and the, the ferries that's had to go up there as well. And this, Bruce, would be your choice of Gibraltar Rock. It's a few pubs in time out, and this is actually a pub that operates and survives because it's for years it's done a, a really half decent carvery. Until very recently, it was two for ten pound. I think it's about two for twelve pound now. <laughs> uh, and inside, it's a bit soulless. 
But on a summer's day, we've got the outside seat and we can see the outside seat on the side of it. And of course, you've got the views to the castle um, there right in front of you, uh, down to the little beach area in the shadow of the castle. The beach course is the infamous uh, Riley's Fish Shack, where you get huge queues of people waiting to get seafood on the fish shack. So really, uh, so, but quite really reasonable prices in here. Uh, again, a couple of beers on, but they're just a great place for in time out, fish and chips, much about all the little shops, got the castle, got on the beach, a few pints afterwards. Yeah, you've got Gibraltar Rock. It's part of a quintessential day out on the coast. People go oh, here yeah. and get on the bus or drive down to Whitley Bay and go to Demio's for an ice cream and great day out. Okay, again, we well mentioned Demio, so there's a nice little picture Bruce can't get without his ice creams. And as we mentioned, the Metro, and, and the Metro is again, um, I, I'm getting it's been there for God, I don't know, 30, 40 oh, years, and what hasn't it? And yeah. I think again, it was one of those renewals. Um, I think it had something to do with the garden festival, I didn't, it? you know, where, where there was that was it Hazel Town that came up inside the game, re whatever it was, cities in Liverpool again, and then Stoke actually, um, all benefited from that. And they began to build the metro, and um, it's a great system, it takes you from the airport. Uh, out to the west, all the way to Time Mouth, North Shield, Whitby Bay. Um, it's pretty cheap. Um, if you you can go anywhere all day for five pound forty, um, and that's both sides of the river and over the river Weir down to Sunderland as well. I think actually if you're staying in a zone, um, it's it's uh, about two pounds an hour. Certainly when we last time we were there, we were at Kingston Park and a great. It's it's pretty efficient. It's pretty fast. Yeah. The regular trains takes you right into the city centre, um, and so certainly you can jump on. I'm just looking there. I think you are. Um, I think you'd get on. I'm just trying to think where if you were in that quayside, Walker Gate, Walls End. No, you're lower than that, aren't you? To get out to Tynemouth from the metro. If I, best to go go back to the station, jump on at the station uh, and uh, Central Station and get it that way. Um, and that's uh, really really useful. They have a they have a massive uh, indoor outdoor market on a Sunday, don't they, Bruce? At um... <laughs> It's packed with stalls. They're really time, rare. time out on the station because once again, at one point, it would seem that the stations are Victorian. It would have been a lot, lot busier than it used to be. Yeah. So I don't think there's any actual real trains going there anymore. It's just the metro that runs in on one line. So yeah. all where all the old platforms were. So they just cover them with stalls. And it's like a massive, great big, uh, big market. And again, the great thing about the metro, that ticket I've got on there, five pound forty. It's everything. It's buses, but it's also ferries. So you can even jump on the ferries and, and go up and down the time. Well, you get uh, the train out to uh, South Shields, take up around uh, the South Shields, a cracking pub there, which I shall mention later. Then that, you get the ferry ticket across to North Shields. And they've actually got a bus, if you don't want to walk up to North Shields, the uh, town's obviously at uh, sea level. And you kind of walk up the town to the metro station. So if you don't want to walk, um, you can get the bus. It'll take you straight to time mouth, almost to the yeah. edge of the bus. And that's including your ticket as well, bizarrely. But of course, there's a, a cracking... Uh, Sam Smith probably in North Shields as well, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. yeah, last time we went, unfortunately, it wasn't open, was it? It's called the, it's, the, it's got a, a real name to it, but I think everybody calls it the Dolly because there's a ship's figurehead outside, isn't there, yeah, of, yeah, a, of a lady. Yeah, yeah. So that's what we did, Bruce. We we uh, caught the Metro to South Shields. I think, is the pub coming next, Mike? Uh, we, the steamboat. That's it. Yeah. yeah, so we went the steamboat. First time I've ever been in there, uh, relied on the camera guide and in fact it was one of those typical camera pubs inside it was it was almost like once again like you said Bruce it was almost like a museum there's just stuff all over the walls wasn't there every little wall space was crammed and it was early on in the day because we'd, we'd basically got late breakfast in uh, in South Shields went to a traditional butcher's remember I got mugged by a seagull we had a we had a we had a Cumberland uh, Cumberland sausage whirl and uh, walked out the butcher's shop and I was just taking my first bike I hear this whoosh over my shoulder Bloody seagull came down and like at end off my sausage, as it were. Who were Uh Yeah. Uh, so nothing, nothing much else to report about South Shields other than I say when we walked down to where the ferry is. Bruce said, "Oh, well, there's a pub down here, which was a it was a chain pub, and it? it's a is it a punch pub, Bruce?" Um, yeah. Yeah, but we look we looked down this side street where Cobble Street was, and I say, "Well, I've." I've, I've read about this steamboat that's somewhere down here and uh, came across it there and uh, yeah, cracking place. It really was. And uh, once again, the, it, because it was literally lunchtime midweek, it was, it was quite one it Bruce, but uh, got have a chat with a guy behind the bar. And when the locals came in, I had a chat with him as well, picked up the local copies of the um, camera newsletters as well. And then headed down to, uh, to catch the ferry across, 
across the tie. And as I say, we were heading for the Sam Swiss pub, but unfortunately it was too early for that. It wasn't open. I think it opened sort of mid-afternoon time. Um, so unfortunately we didn't get it going that one because that looked like a typical, you can just imagine it 50 years back when, you know, uh, the, the, the docks even at Tymouth were absolutely buzzing with, uh, yeah. with, with, with sailors and merchant people. And uh, you can imagine on a, on a dark windswept night, you know, as a place of refuge and uh, you get some feral characters in there. So uh, that's, that's still on the list of things to do, but this, this, uh, the steamboat was a cracking, cracking place to, uh, to start off the day with. Well, for, in terms of the nautical pubs, I think uh, the only other one I've seen that comes close is the, uh, Admiral Benbow in Penzance, and say so if you yeah, like yeah. Team, that's great too. But <laughs> the only thing about South Shields, of course, sadly, is if you want a sort of a depiction of a, if you're an American TV executive looking to depict Broken Britain, the high street there yeah, is absolutely yeah. devastating. But like you say, if you you've got the tide mouth, you've got the 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 ab, uh, the mountain top abbey, isn't it up on the yeah. On the thing there, which is a bit like Whitby, a bit in a way, isn't it? Up on there, the ruins, yeah, yeah. and there's a bit of a castle there as well. And that's a bit in your castle, isn't it? We said you can probably those central pubs you can probably get around pretty much on foot, yeah, yeah. but you've got a great transport network, pretty well, cheap yeah. and pretty quick. So you could, you know, I don't know, probably uh, from Central Station, probably 20 minutes out towards South North Shields, like you say, you can jump on the ferry, go across, and then. Get the metro back you kind of get the metro back get the ferry back so uh all good and if you get stuck just jump on the bus because your ticket will get you on the bus as well so that's pretty good as well so just, just a couple of quick pictures from me in fact i am on there one of the time one of the old uh, time ferries that takes you out up to time mouth yeah. uh, which you can catch from under the time bridge and uh we unfortunately as always i don't know why we always do this but we a bit like when we went on the ship canal from manchester but we always pick the worst day possible so this <laughs> is may this was may whip Week, week about two years ago when we went me and uh, Phil and, Lena and Finn went up for uh, we stopped just outside the airport in a very got a really good deal with the whole, one of the hotels there's other hotels up there as well uh, right next to the metro station big Tesco's uh, and we, we we booked to go on this little trip up the river it was, it was nice it was it was interesting again always really good commentary and again it was fascinating um, the big thing now are the um, pipelines and uh, not pipelines kind of uh, the cables. Yeah. And a lot of the ships in time now, they're specialised now in laying cables, laying, uh, obviously, you know, the, the telecommunications cables. And there's just drums and drums and drums of these cables yeah. and boats that have been completely changed around. Now, a lot of them were boats that used to go and do the oil rigs, and now they've been reconfigured, and that was great. And I'm drinking some of that time, uh, time brewery there, the, the Silver Dollar, which is sold the boat, which is great. And then that picture there, where I'm sat on with about four layers on in, in May, in late May, that's on the beach. They always build the beach, don't they, Bruce? Down underneath the time bridge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for some reason, it's quite a nice little thing, really. I suppose you, you can get to Whitby Bay because actually the beach at Whitby Bay is not great. It's a nice lighthouse, but <laughs> you get it, get yourself to Bamborough a bit further up the, up the coast. Now, we, obviously, we can't go without talking about food. So while you are up, I need to check on Twitter because I was asking about people on Twitter whether anybody uh, had any thoughts about uh, booze soakers. So, of course, Newcastle is famous for a particular type of bread bun, which, of course, Bruce is the... Stotty. Stotty. Which we'd probably call, a, probably call a balm cake or a balm in, uh, in Yorkshire or Lancashire. Uh, but the Stotty is a huge <laughs> slab. And as you can see here, you can, get, you can get a full breakfast in it, which isn't bad as well. Uh, and again, there are quite a few shops. It's a bit like oat cake shops in Stoke. In Stoke. Uh, stocky shops and of course uh, if you really want to go completely kind of two head you have a, a stocky with peace pudding which mm. is uh peace pudding is like um it's, it's kind of peas it's like uh dried peas it's made to kind of a paste and yet that's what you're supposed to have you're supposed to have a stocky and peace pudding um and i did think we can't really not talk about the North East, and we're going to stretch it slightly because the other great delicacy and a great beer soaker of the North East, of course, oh, I'm going to come back to those, is the Parmo, uh, uh, which is more of a Middlesbrough kind of thing. You can get it in yeah. the as well. Uh, yeah. But the Parmo is a chicken, well, I don't know what, what bit of a chicken it is these days. It's a chicken, um, breast, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. covered in Battered. breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs. Uh, and then covered in bechamel sauce. And you normally get it, in, I mean, if you go posh, like the picture on the right hand side there, you get it with <laughs> chips in a pizza box with some salad on the side. Uh, they reckon it's one of the most calorific, don't they, uh, fast uh, foods you can buy in the world. Something <laughs> stupid like thousands of calories in each one. But Bruce, I thought you might like, I, I, I remember these actually. I don't know if you, have you ever had a singing hinny? 
No, no, I So a sigahini is uh, it's a bit like a well, I suppose maybe it would be a Welsh yeah. cake, like a, a squash mm. scone that you cook on uh, one of those those griddles. Um, and then with butter and sugar. So uh, the singing hinny, we'll have to get Bruce and singing hinnies oh, next time we're up there, yeah. and, uh, up there as well. Uh, I've had Pan Hegarty and uh, I've had North Pan Hegarty, yeah. 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 Never yeah. heard of the singing hinny, huh? Yeah, singing hinny. So we'll have to look up with some singing hinnies next yeah. time we're up there as well. And then just to round up, then just again, some of the other bits that I again asking people about places they recommend and places they talk about. So the one that comes up most regularly probably is the Town Mouse. Um, the town mouse is a little kind of micro bar, which is uh, it's up in that kind of where we those first few pubs were up in kind of around um, uh, what's it called Hudson Square, that kind of area there. Um, and but everybody raves about this place. It's again, also there's one called the, the, the Mean Eyed Cat now as well, which yeah. is a micro pub yeah. that uh, yeah. is, uh, is, is supposed to be on a power of the town mouse. It's quite uh, quite coincidental that one's a mouse and one's a cat so yeah. whether they're owned by the same people well, i don't know but if they are then they must be doing something right yeah and i think there's a i think they have a, a brewery attached or they do a brew as well and they do some uh, particular uh, brews uh the box social again is one of those kind of archway taps or, or beer mm. micro pubs again, we were going to go in there were we bruce but we we're heading back to the station we're renting yeah, to yeah. that was the one place that we missed out last time and then yeah. another pub that's got a great um, uh, view of the time is the Free Trade Inn, which again is another kind of hall that I think most people in Newcastle would, you know, would say that's if you've got another pub called around Newcastle. Uh, and then last one next to the world next to the Time Bank Group, but they've got a great tap room as well. Yeah, and, absolutely. And may, may, may not be quite that busy that we see the picture there, but there's certainly somewhere I, I, I quite like their beers when, when I get hold of them. Um, the, I think a lot of the beers in Newcastle, I must say, they are quite, you know, you don't get them a lot elsewhere in the country. They are yeah. quite uh, regionalised. Um, you sometimes forget actually how far north Newcastle is sometimes, don't you? Um, that, that must obviously hinder um, some of those beers. I mean, Wylam would be like that. They're obviously national level, but um, yeah. I think quite quite a regional feel to uh, a lot of those beers. And again, we mentioned, of course, the, the, brew, the brown ale, which again is quite like, iconic for that area as well. So I think, gents, we're about there. Uh, that's been uh, a whistle-stop tour. I think we're, we're, we're under an hour, according to my timing, so that's great. So... I've got a sense that for, for you, Pet, it would probably be either Victoria or the Crown Posada, probably yeah, definitely, be definitely. your choice of pubs, would it not? And I think, Nick, you were thinking that actually probably Durham would be, if you were going to choose one or the other, yeah. you'd say, have, have a few beers in Durham. If you if, if you're in from down south, I would say don't go as far as Newcastle. Yeah, Newcastle is an iconic city, you know, but in terms of having a, a nice compact little wander around with a view of stopping off maybe somewhere else, I would go go definitely Durham, and then you could always stop off back at York on the way back because once again York you can do a good half dozen pubs within the space of you know ten minute quarter now walk from the station sort of thing. Whereas Newcastle, you're a bit more of a hike around really uh, to find mm. decent pubs, you know, in a in a short distance. Well, as you said, uh, Newcastle's quite blessed. Got lots of hotels. There's quite a lot of hotels in certainly Newcastle, but again, I think the best deal certainly I've ever found if you're happy to go out towards the airport and you can drive there. Uh, again, a fine ones. There's a there's whole load of airport, and obviously some really good deals around the airport. It's not a massive airport, Newcastle, um, but you, Kingston Park uh, Metro runs from there, um, and again, it, it takes about I don't know 20 minutes to get into the city centre from there. So worth worth if you want to make a bit of a weekend of it. And what we did, we, we kind of did a bit of both. We went from there to Edinburgh. Edinburgh is about another two hour drive, but you can go via kind of Berwick and Lindisfarne as well. So. A nice little tour that up with you going up that end as well. So good stuff. So uh we are probably going to plan the next one, which is going to look at the Lake District. We mentioned that a few times. And I know Nick, you've been up there recently, um, probably more than myself and Bruce. So uh, the next podcast is entitled Wandering Lonely as a Cloud with a Pint in Hand, and we'll look at the lakes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and again, potentially again, we've got we've got a, a, a newish brewery, a brewery that we can maybe catch on to there as well. And I think well, then we've got to have another rethink, guys, about what we're going to do next, really. We were hopefully going to be meeting up again, but yeah. we've been kind of pushed back a little bit. Yeah, we've, yeah. we've still got Sheffield, haven't we, as a kind of a, as a potential uh, trip out at some point. Uh, we've talked about, we haven't done Manchester yet, so that's another one we probably need to consider as well. Yeah. Uh, but again, as always, listeners, if anybody's got any ideas or suggestions, please do get back to us. Um, I think if we get to maybe to 20 and then we might have a bit of a break and, and, and come back with a, a, a different uh, format, etc. It's really good as well. So, guys, any plans for the weekend? Obviously, it's Father's Day on Sunday. So, uh, 
bit low key in its Father's Day, but uh, the Mother's Day. Any plans for drinking adventures? Well, the weather forecast pretty good on Sunday, so um, unfortunately, why should it work? But I think we are going out for tea somewhere, so I'm not decided where yet. Um, I'll see how much my, the, the, her budget is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know about saying it's, it's it's low key, mate. But looking at all the place I looked at, everywhere's booked up. So oh, really? Uh, right. Once again, it seems that this year, yeah, the pubs uh, that can accept uh, bookings and are happy to do table service are going to be busy, busy, busy. So um, yeah. yeah, not not sure yet. I'm that not, was I'm not my working, thought but, actually. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we might we might head out to either Thornbridge or to Buxton again. Because they're quite big spaces, so uh, I think that that's my plan. Do a bit of well, yeah, just say, just those. just check it out because I say places yeah. I've looked at to, to, to sit down and eat certainly on Sunday. They're uh, they're all they're yeah, all booked we've, certainly we've, during the day. We felt that's that's where we go to like boxing where they do like they have street vendors and uh, thorn bridges and pizza ovens in there, which is really good. Hmm. So good stuff. So there's been a whistle stop tour on the northeast. Uh, again, please if you listen to us on the podcast or when we get to all the good podcast. Um, Leave us a review. And again, if you want to watch us on YouTube, so we've got a few, actually Nick got quite a few pictures today of their little trips, Bruce's and his trips there as well. Um, have a look at those. So uh, it, that's it. So cheers. Jen. Yeah, your bugger man. Speak to all you soon. Uh, aye, go away, Hiddy. Go and watch <laughs> the, when, the, when the book comes in. Uh, right, I'm going to play a bit more music and then we will we will slowly uh, drink, lick into our glasses. Bruce doesn't know his beer, so I don't know what he's doing. <laughs>